What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a simple trick for managing all of your extensions in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how you can use bundles in order to quickly update your extensions in a new version of SketchUp. All right, so eventually you get to a point where just the number of different extensions that you may have loaded, depending on what you're doing, can be a little difficult to manage, right? You can get a ton of different toolbars up here. It's easy to forget what tools you have installed and just kind of managing it all can be kind of a pain. Now, what you can do is you can go inside of the SketchUp, or the SketchUp extension manager and you can disable extensions, right? So for example, say I was to drop out 1001 bit tools in here, then it's not going to be loaded, but you are going to have to like manually close down the toolbar, all of that. Um, and you would have to do that individually for different extensions, right? So, you know, you'd have to disable, apply changes, restart SketchUp, all of that, which is fine. You can do that, but I find it's helpful to be able to load in different groups of extensions, depending on what I'm trying to do. So, Usually what I'm using to manage my extensions is actually a tool that's built into the Sketchication plugin store. And a lot of people don't know that it's there. I mean, most SketchUp users have the Sketchication plugin store. You can get that from the Sketchication website because it gives you access to the Sketchication plugin store and you can install those extensions yourself. But what a lot of people don't know is there's also a plugins manager that you can use to load or unload extensions. Okay, and so you can find this by going up to Extensions, Sketchication. You can go to the Sketchication Plugins Manager. That's gonna pop up a window that looks like this. And you can see that this 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 works in a very simple like left, right, um, two column format. So what you can do with this is you can select your different extensions and you can unload them or load them using this tool right here. So for example, I could take a bunch of these, I can move them over to the left and they're going to be disabled. Note that this is color coded, meaning that um, this is showing you that anything that's red is going to be disabled whenever you start SketchUp. Now that's gonna get important in a second, but you can use this in order to load or unload different extensions like this. In my opinion, it's faster. You can do kind of the multiple select thing by holding control or you can do a shift click and then you can unload multiple different things. Um, and it's also going to tell you um, if you have something like this debabilizer, I probably don't want to disable that one. But notice how this is showing me what's enabled and what's disabled. This by itself, very cool. Um, and I find it to be a better way of managing SketchUp extensions, partially because um, I've found, and I haven't tested this in 2024, the extension manager doesn't always save your plugin state, meaning your loaded states but the plugins manager from uh, Sketchication does. So if I restart SketchUp, it's going to show up exactly the way that I'm showing it right here. Now, one thing that I really, really like about this tool is this option right here, which a lot of people don't know about. It basically allows you to manage sets of plugins. So this is a plugin set manager that allows you to set up different sets of plugins so that you can basically save that state and go back to it. So in this situation, what I did is I just dumped all of my plugins in here so that I'd have all my menus up at the top of the page, but I have a lightweight version of my plugins that I can select, click on apply, and notice what that's gonna do is that's going to basically, that's going to load that plugin state, meaning that now if I restart SketchUp, I'm only going to have these loaded. So hopping into SketchUp right here, you can see how this is much lighter weight. And I could also drag these out and delete them, but I like to have a very clean workspace with the most possible space inside of my 3D space right here. But if I go to Sketchication, notice how I have a lot less extensions loaded. I can go to the Plugins Manager right here, and this only has these extensions loaded. Now, if I wanted to bring in a couple others, I could do that. Like if I wanted to bring in Clothworks and Architectures, for example. And notice how those toolbars are gonna pop over here. Now, some extensions require you to restart SketchUp before this is going to work. But say you wanted to create a new state in here. Basically what you do is you create the states. So I'm gonna get rid of these. And then let's say I wanted to create a state where only TIGS tools were in here. So I'm just going to load these like this. So now I've got TIGS 
tools showing up in here, the ones that I have installed on this computer anyway. So I've got my TIG tools in here. Well, then you can jump into this plugin set loader or uh, plugin set manager, and I'm going to call this one TIG all. And I'm gonna click on add. And basically what that's done is that's saved this plugin state, whatever it is under TIG all right here. So now um, if I go back to my lightweight, it's going to unload those TIG extensions. If I wanted to load the TIG all, I could click on the apply right here and that's going to show up. Now, in order to get the toolbars to reload, you do have to restart SketchUp, but I don't really consider that to be that big of a deal. Now, let's say that you needed to add something to a plugin set. So say I've got my TIG all right here. I'm gonna apply this. And let's say extrude tools, for example, wasn't labeled with a TIG, but it is a TIG extension. So you could load this extrude tools in. Um, now extrude tools is gonna show up, but I could click on the TIG all and I can click on update. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna update this plugin set so that now extrude tools is saved as a part of this plugin set right here, which is super valuable. Now, one other thing, and so you can use this in order to set that lightweight state. And then if I restart SketchUp, you're gonna notice that those toolbars that were in there are now gone because those plugins are no longer loaded. Now, one other cool thing about this, and I didn't even realize this until just now, but basically what this is gonna do is this is going to also give you an option to set a load temporarily. So what that means is that means that say that I was going to use um, Curic mirror, for example, and I wanted to load that in, but I don't want it to load every time that I um, turn on SketchUp. What I can do is I can click on this option right here, and it's going to temporarily load Curic mirror. Notice how it's still shown as a disabled plugin and it's yellow. So that means that Curic mirror is only going to be active for this session of SketchUp. So say I come in here, I use Curic mirror, I do whatever it is I need to do with Curic Mirror right here. And then I close out of SketchUp and I restart it. Notice how within the plugins manager right here, Curic Mirror is not loaded. So you can use this to set a temporary load state for an extension so that it only loads for one session using this button right here. So realistically, if you wanted to, you could load all of these using just a temporary state. So it's gonna bring them in. You could use them for one session. And this is actually a really great way to manage these because it's gonna re-disable them at the end of your session. And it's just going to default to what you have over here. So fantastic way to keep your plugin set light inside of SketchUp. All right, and then finally, I'm gonna show you something that could theoretically be very cool for bringing your extensions over when you um, start a new version of SketchUp. So. If you go to the extensions, Sketchcation, you go into the extensions store, there's actually a tool that saves the extensions from the Sketchcation extension store on your computer into bundles where you can load them on another computer later. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on the settings button right here, and you wanna hop over into the tab labeled bundles. And so when you do this, it's gonna give you this big list of computers. And um, partially I have a big list just because I've installed SketchUp on a lot of different computers. Um, but basically this is showing you the plugin states that it has saved from those computers as well as the version. So you can see how you have the computer name in here. So in this case, this would be my computer name and then SketchUp 2023. This one would be the computer name and SketchUp 2024 right here. And what it's done is each one of these computers has saved the plugin state from that computer. So what that means is that means in my SketchUp 2023, it has saved the extensions that I had loaded um, on that computer right here. Again, just the ones that were downloaded from Sketchication. But you can use this in order to see those extensions, but notice how because this is saved to the cloud and it's specific to your username on Sketchication, there's actually an option here to install the bundle. So if I went on another computer, I could click on the install bundle button and install every Sketchication extension from the Sketchication extension store onto that computer with a single click. Now, one thing I'm not clear on with this is I do not know if 
this checks those extensions to see if they're compatible with a brand new version or not. I have not tested that, so I don't know the answer to that one. Um, that could be very important though, um, because if you do switch between two computers that are running SketchUp 2024, you probably know that the computers running 2024, the extensions that you have loaded are working. So you could use this in order to install that bundle on another computer. Now, note that you can also, you can't edit the ones that are actually saved having to do with your computer, right? There's no buttons in here or anything like that. It just kind of saves them. One thing I don't understand is in my SketchUp 2024, this is not up to date with the number of extensions that I have installed on this computer from Sketchication. So I'm not sure when it takes this snapshot, when it updates it, if it has to do with what's loaded and what isn't loaded, other things like that. That I'm not sure about. I couldn't find too much information about that. But say that you wanted to save a custom collection of extensions, what you could do is you could take one of your SketchUp installs and you can clone it. And so in this case, I'm just gonna name this Justin Custom and click on clone. When I do that, notice that it duplicated this Justin MSI desktop into a Justin Custom. If I expand that, notice how there's little X's over here where you can remove plugins or extensions from the bundle. So say I didn't want three point window dresser, say I didn't want Goldilocks in here, whatever, you can remove them. And so this is going to be a custom collection of plugins or extensions that you can install on another computer just by clicking on this button. The big limitation here, other than I'm not sure when it pulls the snapshot or what that snapshot is based on, the big limitation here is that this only works for extensions that are hosted on Sketchication, not for ones in the SketchUp extension warehouse. So um, that's unfortunate, but it's still a massive time saver if you've got like 40 different extensions that you want to reinstall from the Sketchication extension store. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about any of this, if you were using it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp in your work, make sure you check out my course, which I'll link to on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.